Hey everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today I'm gonna be going into New York City. I'm already there um, to hit a pretty well-known, but kinda old school, under the radar dealer in his basement coin shop. I'm not gonna say the name, but if you know, I'm sure you know. Um, we're gonna be looking for some world coins. Uh, we're gonna be looking for some silver. So I'm excited to see what I can come away with. And yeah, I'm about to go to California. That'll be a big move. So want to visit some of the dealers I know best uh, before I head out. So let's see what I get. I'm not gonna show any footage. They're pretty private, um, but we'll have the recap afterwards. All right, so time to take a look at what's in front of us. I'm back home, bought all the stuff there. It was actually not that much money. I only spent, I think, $504 plus. I'm gonna pay 5% over melt, which silver is like 90 or, you know, uh, 29.50 an ounce right now so it's actually going to end up being pretty expensive but let's go through it maybe we start with the things that i'm paying i haven't even tabulated it yet um because i didn't have time i might have somebody else do it but um we've got a nice australia floor 92.5 percent silver it's actually quite a high price to be paying for some of this stuff um 1941 two shilling from britain 1943 and 1938 in terms of the bulk markets, at least, I'll obviously try to get a bit more than that when I sell it to retail. Um, but I try to be very transparent about, like, being comfortable talking about my spreads. Because they're somewhat thin, but on some stuff, it ends up being really good. Here's a three pence from South Africa. So uh, none of these types were crazy rare, but definitely that's a good price to pay for a 1932 shilling. So obviously when I'm buying silver like that... Some of the stuff that gets thrown in ends up being pretty good. So 1883 Spanish Peseta. Here we've got a 1947 one kroner from Sweden. That one's pretty cleaned up. That's only like 40% silver or should be. 1912 two boulevards. This one was a, oh, I also bought these. I think I paid in total 160 that factored into that price. Bought a fair amount of Spanish Netherlands Jetons. I thought that was quite a nice price um, somewhere in the like, $24 range. I was quite pleased to get that because I think that they're worth a good bit more. 1666. The Spanish Netherlands Jetons are a little bit less common from what I found versus the French ones. Um, but they're always beautiful. 1745. And they're from a pretty early um, you know, point in history. So I'm not exactly sure where I see the date on this specific, there it is, 1745, on this specific one, but they were basically often either used as presentation pieces, gambling tokens, or accounting tokens. Um, this one was in quite nice condition from Namur, 1739. Jet d'état de Namur, jeton of the states of Namur. So, that's, I think, I don't exactly understand the history of, like, what the Spanish Netherlands exactly represents. I think this might, I think there was one flip that contained two of them. All right, that's also in quite nice shape. Let's take a look there. I'm not super clear on what the crest is of either. 1666, though, you can see pretty clearly. And I think I'll try to have pretty quick turnaround on all of these in my upcoming sales. Let's see, and then I, I think... And this bag might be the last of the gems. These, again, have already been paid for. 1677 in nice shape. 1677 looks like two of the same. And I'm seeing King Carol, maybe Carol II or Charles II, something along those lines. But to finish out the are not yet paid for silver, we've got some Swiss one franc coins with a very consistent Helvetia design. Ooh, maybe it was seven. Yeah, seven of them. That's great news. Forgot about that extra gen. 1942 Australia shilling. 1960 Spanish Bolivar. Here's a 1947 Panamanian. Uh, some of these are pretty interesting. I like the Panamanian. 90% also trades at a nice premium. It was struck to the exact fineness of U.S. coins, which is pretty interesting. Um, so we still have a one-to-one, -one, like, Panama uses the dollar, basically. And then over here, I haven't done this stack either. 1964 Canadian. Here's a 1950 shilling. 1918 sixpence. 1870 French one franc. The values are nowhere near what I paid, by the way. Um, or will pay. 
these have clearly been sitting around for a very long time, except that I guess that one's also, I'll pay way under that suggested price on the 1930 Panamanian half Balboa. I don't think that's a key date, but for all I know, or, you know, I don't know, so it could be. That should be a nice coin, 1907S uh, Philippines, 50 centavos. And then we've got some nice looking Florins, 38, 43, 13, and then a 1914 two franc coin. So nice mix of stuff there. Let's see, I bought a few kind of just test pieces in here. This one was a Liberian US mint struck $5 coin from 1973. Basically the mint struck a bunch of collector coins using official government legal tender. Uh, and then here's really nice looking 1944s Spanish Philippines coins. These I've got to put under the Sigma. I paid, I think, $30.50 each, but they're these Valley Ford, Valley Forge Key Revolutionary War medals. I think that they're exactly one ounce of silver, maybe 92.5%, but the weight's a good bit over that. We have some uh, famous figures, Stephen Decatur, Molly Pitcher, Paul Revere, and who's that, Henry Clay at the end there. And then we have an $8 medal. I paid eight bucks for this St. Bernard, super large medal. I don't know, that maybe that was crazy. It's not from 1885, it's probably made in the 80s or so. But, or 1971, the Westminster Kennel Foundation. Or maybe that's when the foundation's founded. And then this Portuguese 92.5% medal as well um, was a smaller pickup, but just something that was interesting. Here we had a French, I thought this was really fascinating because I've sold some of the uh, individual coins, but we've got some beautiful mint set uh, of the French from 1973. Again, uh, with all the original French, French mint packaging. I think that's kind of a neat little coin. Um, and then I got two of these Franklin mint. Uh, mint that's uh, Henry Tanner. There's Harry Truman. Um, so both sterling, or actually these are 72% silver medals, I want to say. Um, and then lastly, this was what I was really excited about. What I thought was probably the best deal of the batch was, and I bought them with more premium than the rest of the stuff, but not tons of premium were these Cuban coins so I got a bunch of them and they're pretty nice looking this one's going to be 1915 40 centavos 1915 1916 1915 and 1915 um, and then here I've got a few of the Jose Marti 50 centavos also in a beautiful 90% silver this one's particularly lustrous, though a little bit of a rim nick I just saw, but I'm not going to be too picky on these ones. And then Marti, who I want to say is a poet, looks like he also struck a bunch more, so, um, or not struck a bunch more, uh, I was able to pick up a bunch more. So, all fun to be able to offer exciting world coins, um, which is great, and I guess my next step is going to be to figure out the silver value so I can pay 105% on all of this stuff which i'll be excited to do and so yeah excited to get that together and talk coins and take you along all the upcoming buying trips that i'm going on thanks for watching the video make sure to head on over to treasuretown.com and sign up for our email list to stay up to date on everything that's happening whether it's auction updates exciting new inventory drops coin collecting news or general informational resources hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you on another one